good point, Tom. Yeah. And we got a lot of kind of good feedback from this. We really enjoyed using the system ourselves. It went down really well. One thing kind of we realized was that once you'd unlocked every perk, there wasn't really much else to do. You couldn't buy anything else. So we thought to ourselves, well, how do you, how do you beat having, you know, a grid of, of 25 or even three times that from Horizon 3? And we decided, uh, let's add a skill tree to every car. So we're now looking at the Ford Raptor uh, F-150. And you can see that this is its car mastery tree. So starting in the bottom left here, we've got something that will give you um, some instant car collection influence. So that'll actually go towards your campaign that we were talking about last week. So I'm going to unlock that one. I'm going to move through the menu a little bit. Here's uh, something that will give you a bonus in event finish influence. So again, going towards campaign. Um, we've got some new ones. This is a big, big favourite of mine, Extra Life. So now. Um, each skill chain takes two collisions to break, so that's that's absolutely brilliant. So if you want to get those drift zones, especially Force Fun yep. Live, which we had a look at, right, doing those perfectly for those kind of drift spaces, unlock that, and if you've got the mastery, it's going to help you out massively in getting those changed. How do you go about earning the points? So you earn the points by banking skills in the world. So the skill system is, as it kind of returns, anything cool that you do, you'll get that instant feedback. So drifting, wreckage, air, you start kind of earning those at the top of the screen and you chain them together and they will build and build into a bigger and bigger combo and then you bank all of those points and as they kind of um, increase, you then earn skill points to spend here. Right, so what, what are the kind of, what are the ones that we have within the uh, Ford Raptor space? So, so you've, got, you've got Extra Life. Yeah, so this is all about cross-country racing, which is perfect. It's kind of what the car is built to do, really. So you've got there a, um, a kind of repeatable um, Perk, which will give you uh, points for cross-country events. Yep. You've got wrecking ball, you've got air, all the kind of stuff that you'd expect when you're barreling down the side of a mountain, smashing bushes, jumping over the top of hills, stuff like that. Um, if we get into another car with a completely different tree, so let's get into something like, here we go. This, this, is, this is the thing, what kind of justifies the kind of different skill trees that you're going to be getting with the cars? Is it kind of going to have, is every car, car type going to have specific like skills that you can unlock? Because I, I know it's going to range from like 5 to 25 skills, is it? Um, for yeah. each car, what kind of decides that? So there's, there's up to um, 16 kind of uh, perks within a mastery tree. Yep. And the, the cost of those perks ranges anything from like one simple kind of skill point all the way up to 25. Um, in terms of what you get within a car, it's really what the car is designed to do. So that Raptor we saw was all about cross-country racing and um, how you kind of boost those skills. This uh, Forza Edition Ford Capri with its like jacked up suspension, massive tyres, which is perfect for dirt racing, you can see it's got Dirt Monster there, which is a perk which will benefit you in dirt racing events. And everything else is the kind of thing that you would expect um, in dirt racing. So again, we've got things like Drift, which is uh, something that rally cars are quite iconic for. You've got uh, Sideswipe, which is when you destroy something as you're drifting, um, as well as some really, really cool ones like um, this perk here means your skill multiplier builds twice as fast. So again, that goes back to the Forza Online stuff we were talking about. And then, can last I, week. if you're doing that with a skill multiplier, so it builds faster. Is that a way of earning more points quickly? Yeah. Because like that, that, this because one of the big features that kind of I got really excited about, and like this is the thing, is that you can earn build the, the mastery of the car, but it sticks to that specific car. That's right. I think that's the best thing about this feature actually is um, you can earn masteries and complete this skill table for each like individual instance of a car, but if you get another Ford Capri Forza Edition, it will start with a blank skill tree. And then you can actually you know, spend your skill points and build that one up uh, as well. And what's, what's doubly great about it is that you can actually sell a completely mastered car on, on the auction house, for example. Yep. Um, and, and that could have real value, I think. Yeah. This is the thing, right? This, I, can, I can already see what people are gonna do, because this is the first thing that popped into my head when I heard about this. Because you know, everyone wants Edinburgh Castle, right? The most expensive player house. You can just like perfect a certain style of driving in a certain car and just become the ultimate like Veyron, like, like, all, like McLaren Senna kind of dealer. Just like, all right, I'm gonna be able to, I'm gonna learn how to master this car every single time they start flogging them off in the auction house. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And people will come to you for their like completely mastered Veyron or, or Senna. And I, I think the other thing about this, you, you don't just, I think I'm right in saying, you don't just get to spend the skills you earn in that car on this car. If it, it's a bit you know, complicated yeah, you know, way of saying it, but... Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely right. All skill points are global. So if you've got a car that you're, like you absolutely love banking skill chains in, or it's a car that's particularly brilliant at that because all of its perks accelerate like earning points back, you get in this really nice kind of um, brilliant cycle where you get into a car, like say, um, a kind of Hunicorn car, 
a couple of its uh, perks unlocked. You start earning loads of points, and then you get into new cars, and then you spend them, and then you're getting the benefits from those, and then you're back into the hidden corner, earning more points. And it just kind of goes like that. It's, it's, it's an awesome feature for people to take advantage of. Also, guys, for those watching, remember, if, you, if you've just tuned into the stream, we are doing a little giveaway as well for in-game cosmetic items. All you've got to be doing is get involved in the Mixer chat over on mixer.com forward slash uh, forward to motorsport, and you have a chance of winning that particular customer in-game customization item uh, which you can then use once Force Horizon 4 comes out to get involved and you'll get a whisper if, yeah, so you have a chance of winning one which is really really cool. Uh, we've also got a couple little questions that have come in. Uh, so from Thunderbird he says will barn finds be affected by seasons? Um, so that's a good question. I think the, the, the biggest way in which they are affected is that there are some which are season specific. So there are there are certain uh, barn finds which will only appear in certain seasons. And we've talked about one previously, which is the really obvious example, the one that's on an island in the lake, which you can only get to when it's frozen in winter, for example. But actually, I think each season has a, a seasonal barn find, which is only available during that season. Yeah, so uh, like, I, I, saw, I saw one that was on. Actually, can I, can I spoil the location, roughly? Uh, I, saw, I saw one earlier, I just don't know if I want to ruin it. Sure, yeah, yeah. Right, on the, in the middle on the middle of the lake, there was like a little barn found. That's like literally the one I just <laughs> mentioned, yeah. <laughs> I, I, just, I had a little mind blank. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it happens sometimes, I'm sorry. Uh, so there's 450 cars in the game. Yeah. 450 cars in the game which you can kind of go. Do you reckon anyone's going to be able to master those? Like, how long do you reckon it's going to take? So. I, I honestly don't Someone think will. So. Someone somewhere will do it. Have you done the math on, on how many? No, and I don't even do it myself. I know, right. Someone will, like how, we always say. Yeah, yeah. How much time do you reckon it'll take? Like, it's a, it's a long, long time. time. It's it's a long it'll take a long time. Do you know I, what? Players, I, I, players always surprise us, but there's always a bunch of things we say, oh, no one will ever be able to do that, and, and, and someone yeah. does it ridiculously. I hope someone does. Yeah. Send us a screenshot if they do. Yeah, yeah I, think, I, th I think we should kind of have a look at Forza Fun, because last week we obviously took a look at Forza Fun Live for the very first time. But that's not all the way to Forza Fun. So, Ben, could you kind of tell us everything else there is tonight? Yeah, let's go through it. So, this is the main Forza Fun screen. So, last week we were looking at Forza Fun Live, which is your kind of promise that every hour on the hour there'll be something cool to do, and that'll give you Forza Fun points, which was kind of a new currency we touched on. Yeah. And we spoke about how you spend those in the Forza Fun shop. Um, so, beyond every hour, we wanted to make sure the players had something to do every day. So you now get daily challenges, and those are maybe the closest to Forza Horizon 3's Forza Fun. So they're like bite-sized challenges that you can do. So you can see some there in the middle of the screen. You've got like Earn Five Ultimate Air Skills. We've actually already completed that one and got our points from it. Um, some awesome near miss skills or ultimate skill chains. They're like kind of quick things to do. Um, and they will come through. You'll get one daily challenge a day, but you don't have to absolutely complete it that day. We tend to, um, we allow you to keep kind of three in stock, yeah. so to speak. So if you've been away for the weekend and you come back on Monday, you've still got, you know, the last couple of days worth, so you can quickly rattle those off. And they're kind of analogous, I guess, to if, if anyone's played Forza Horizon 3, which is the first game we had Forza Thon in, um, and are familiar with those challenges, they're kind of analogous to the challenges that we had in Forza Thon in, in yeah. FH3, right? And that they are pretty easy to do. You can knock them off, like, almost without knowing it, as we have. Um, but there's, certain, there's not a big time investment involved in doing them, but there is this reward. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're really simple. In fact, we often find that when we're, um, when we're testing the game internally, you'll be, you'll be doing daily challenges without really thinking about it, but it's like a nice reminder that Fortifon's there and giving you rewards. So beyond daily challenges, we wanted to make sure that you've got something to do every week. And so this is where the weekly challenge comes into place. And the weekly challenge is all about getting into like a particular kind of special car, like maybe something like a Nissan GTR or a particular type of car. So here we've got the vintage racer type. Um, and this will give you more points than a daily, like many more points than a daily, but it'll take a lot more work to do, like half an hour, an hour's kind of play. Um, and there's usually four stages to do in a weekly challenge. So you can see here, the first one is like owning and driving a vintage racer. So let's, let's say that we've got that. We then go through and here is earning two particularly tricky skills to get during, um, during races. So there's like a really cool thing to do in that car and it's kind of leading you on a bit of a story. Yeah. Um, do all four and you get all of the full stun points. So like, so that's how I know kind of compared to a day challenge, you can get a lot more points, but it's a lot more work to put in to yeah. do it. But it will give you different experiences because you're going to have like the uh, the Antigua Roadshow one. But what so the following week, what could you have a completely different challenge? Yeah, well? could be classic muscle, could be like the Nissan GTR, like I was saying, Bugatti Veyron. Um, using the Veyron as, a, as an example, you'll be doing things like you know driving above 250 miles an hour for five minutes. 
stuff like that. Like challenges that are perfect for that type of car. I'm right in saying that you have to do these in order. So you, yes. you go one, two, three, four. And it's kind of a, a little bit of a story, a little bit yeah, of a progression. Yeah, it is, yeah, it is a bit of a story. Yeah. Um, I see we've got Max British with uh, our uh, uh, challenge names here. Antiquated Roadshow. Yeah, it's yeah. Similar so, to jolly good show. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Jolly good. Similar to television. <laughs> um, a dickens of a job there, isn't uh, it? I, I yeah. saw that one also. <laughs> uh, before we kind of go through a bit more Ford stuff and Ford's form, we've just got a couple more questions from the chat. Because guys, remember, if you've got any questions about anything that we're discussing, whether it's winter or any of the new features, drop them in the mix chat, and then Ben or Ralph could uh, answer them for you. Uh, but Oliver Watley has just asked, is there still the convoy feature in the game? Yes, there is. Yeah, there's still the convoy feature. However, convoy is now your way of um, grouping up with other players. And we've spoke and shown a lot of the really awesome kind of anti-grief stuff we've got, including Auto Ghost. So you know how you're driving around free roam and people can't ruin your game by crashing into you. Well, when you convoy with other people, um, collisions are back on because this is a way of you saying, I'd like, I'd like to have that experience with these people who I know. So it's like perfect for um, tandem drifting and things like that. Yeah, and uh, Batteries has also just asked, is there still an auction house? Which we, don't, we, we just touched on a couple of ago. Yeah, yeah, there is still an auction house, absolutely. Yeah. Which people are going to be able to take advantage of, yeah, which is uh, especially with all those new features. But should we have a look at uh, the rest of the uh, Forts Fun section? Yeah, so we went through, there's something to do every hour, yeah. every day, every week, and you've got your Forts Fun points, what can you spend them on? So here you go, Forts Fun shop. And you can see that there's a really nice collection of rare items in the game. And the way the Forts Fun shop works is, Every week when the season changes, its stock refreshes. Mm -hmm. um, you don't lose any of your Forza Thumb points, you can save them up as long as you want and just wait for the perfect item in here that you want to get. And the way to think about this is that it's a way to um, guarantee getting a reward without any RNG completely ruining it for you every time you go through something like wheel spin. Like, yeah. I'm desperate for that particular Forza edition. Like the Capri that I was in when I was going through the mastery stuff. You can see there that it's um, it's in the shop and it's got a price and that gives you something to save up for so you can guarantee that that's what you're going to get instead of trying your luck with wheel spin. Also, is there ever going to be any like exclusive items in the Forza Thorn shop that you're not going to be able to get in the game of, like elsewhere? Else out? I don't think so, no. No, we don't, I, we don't want to get anything in the, uh, any content in the game behind a specific feature. Yeah. Um, we haven't you know, gated any behind this feature, um, so it'll all be stuff that you can get different ways throughout the game but but like Ben says it's the perfect sort of shop front to come to and you know and get that thing that you just you really want and just hasn't been landing for you in real space. Can you use like your like in-game money or like real money to kind of be able to kind of ex like speed up the process of getting these like kind of force on points so you can like kind of just shortcut. just force on points yeah you can't use in-game cash. So no, nothing else which is awesome but like the thing is is so just take a look at all the items that you can get a hold of um, what kind of like costings and everything like that is that kind of still still TDC? I think yeah. we're still working on that. Yeah, still filling it out a little bit. Um, I mean, you can see on the screen that a full tradition car costs more than you know a kind of I say a normal car. It's still a <laughs> GTR R34, which is awesome. But um, we're still yeah working out the other rates of cost. Yeah. That's awesome. But before we move on to the next section, Infamous Creations is just asked: Are there rewards and perks for being a painter or tuner? Right, in for Forza Horizon 4. Yes, um, I would refer um, them to last week's, the VOD of last week's show actually, um, where, we, where we sort of dug into uh, the, the, the campaign mode, the Horizon Life. Um, now by being a painter and, and, and a tuner, um, you can actually progress your, your campaign in a way that you've never been able to before. Um, so you, you will be able to, by through being successful as a tuner or as a painter, um, you'll be able to earn influence, you'll be able to, uh, to level up and progress towards you know, being a Horizon superstar, which is the goal of the game. Um, and I think that's really cool because we know lots of people spend you know, a lot of their, their time in, in the paint shop. This is a way now for them you know, to see real fruits of that within the game's progression. Yeah. Right, so anyway, thank you very much for talking to us through Ford's Thorn. We've got so much more stuff coming up for the show. Big thank you to Ralph.